Hello everybody and welcome to Marshall Africa. I'm Fushia and let's chat. Sorry, sorry, can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is Omo. <laughs> He didn't realize we were going. <laughs> Never mind, I thought you, I was getting ready for you to talk for a bit, actually. You're like, let's. Oh, shock, sorry, uh, man. We can go again. So the I'm pressure sorry. was too much. Uh, we can, no, we can keep it. We can keep it. Okay, uh, uh, I'm, I'm Omo and I'm Fushio's student. Uh, yeah. We decided that we're going to start doing a, um, a podcast. We decided to change formats a little bit. I want to get in because there's a bit of an opportunity to kind of get my own thoughts out there and so on. And I'm. I, I want to start with why I started a channel called Marshall Africa, exactly. And it started with, um, I was teaching a bunch of students and um, the question came up from two of newer students of mine. Um, so the flag on the wall, it's a South Korean flag, I'm like, yes, no, the style we do is from South Korea. And um, then I asked about karate, I'm like, yeah, interesting, karate is from Japan. And this conversation kept building. And just to give a little bit of context there, um, I'm not going to say their last name, but any South African who hears their last name knows that they are connected to, you know, a quite um, respected royal family within mm. South Africa. And um, I remember having a conversation with those two young ladies before how awkward it is sometimes to go back to the, the, the home country, the homeland, and, um, you know, their English is a little bit better than their home language and the mm. flag they catch because of that because ah oh, you you're members of this royal family how can't you be absolutely fluent you know have to speak the highest in-depth version of this language you can and like ah oh, they have this thing that they have to work through which is tough for young people to work through and i remember then they asked about southeast asian martial arts in this conversation i mean i'm geeking out about this topic and the students are all martial artists and they love it and i remember one of the two was like ah oh, sir i wish we had something here I'm like, but we do, we do. Everywhere you go in South Africa, there is, everywhere you go on the continent, there are indigenous martial arts. Mm. Um, you know, just off the top of my head, um, the, the, the Amazulu people are very well known for their stick fighting competitions that they hold. And it is both a ceremony and a sport and a way to keep people battle ready, you know. Um, and um, I'm noticing online more and more people are watching Zulu stick fighting, more people from the States are watching stick fighting online. Mm. Um, it's this opportunity. And then up in the north of our country, we've got bare knuckle boxing and it's this cultural thing that people have been doing since forever. Um, and I thought, I live here, I grew up here. Why don't I just focus a little bit on that? And now I'm at a point where I want to focus on those things, but I also want to have conversations with um, martial artists in South Africa. What does it mean to be a martial artist here on the continent. Um, I've been fortunate enough to travel and to meet people from all over the world and a lot of people are martial artists themselves and one thing that I keep picking up, I mean skills are all over the place, some people are fantastic, some people are maybe not that good but we're all on our own journey, all of us are getting better at the craft that we're committing ourselves to mm. but um, there's something different with the practitioners on this continent specifically. And also a little bit to those two students as well you know, to all South Africans, we, we don't have to step back an inch when it comes to the international world. In fact, we've got so much value within our country, within our cultures, just the diversity alone, and then martial arts specifically. It's rich, it's it's deep, we should explore it. 100%. So that's what I want to do. Okay, that's what I want beautiful. Do. beautiful. Yeah. Tell me about your martial arts. Tell me when you started training with us. Oh, okay. Um, that was 2022... I want to say August or September. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first time I walked into your class uh, for kickboxing. And I've been there for... Since then. Now it's Feb of 2024. Yeah. So about a year, a year and a half. A year, four months. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it's been quite a journey. And because it's, it's such a gradual growth, uh, it doesn't feel like I've moved too far from then to now. All I know is that I'm more confident when I'm sparring now mm. than I was when I first started because it used to scare me when I first started whenever someone would punch I'd mm. close my eyes and cover up mm. and as much as I still do the step back whenever I get punched instead of getting it to be my first in instinct to do the 45s and like move in move yeah. to the side I still move back as 
my more natural instinct mm-hmm. it the fact that i'm still thinking now i'm, I'm thinking about it means mm-hmm. that I, I i have come a far away mm-hmm. uh, and it's 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 been a, it's been a journey it's been an experience also mm-hmm. yeah i think that's part of the that's a big part of teaching is the psychological um because everybody can within the first few months i can teach you how to punch i can teach you how to kick you know mm. keep your hands up that's very simple but then the psychological especially when we work with a more full contact setting like with the kickboxing yes where you know if you're not careful you're going to get punched you're going to feel it um and obviously we're always careful and brain damage is a real thing and we're always very sure to keep things as safe and controlled as possible but um as soon as somebody your size your weight your speed squares up against you you know you fall back to the most basics and that is just trying to survive in that moment um so to teach people to 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 cut those 45 so yes there's nothing wrong with retreating backwards but if that's your only answer to the situation you know you you're going to run out of space you're going to you know a person attacking you moving forward will always be faster than you going backwards, going backwards yes. so at some point you need to catch yourself within the moment i think the, a very interesting experience i had i did gymnastics just for fun for one year the mm. robot of gymnastics and they said all right guys today we're learning front flips and we're going to put up this board for you and you're going to you're going to jump off this board it's a springboard and you're going to make a flip into the um like a pit full of sponge blocks mm. and um and i'm like all right let's go and i run and i do my jump and i'm fairly high up and the next thing i know i'm in the pit I'm like, did I do it? And the coach is like, no, you just went up and down. You just landed with your feet first. Like, what? Oh. And um, he said, don't worry. It's called airtime awareness. Mm. You just need to be there often enough for you to um be awake in that moment, to mm. really be awake in that moment. And I will say by the end of that year, when I ran up to that uh, and actually we got to a point where there was no more springboards just on the mat. You run and you jump, and as you jump, you have all the time in the world to think this through. Tuck your knees shoot in f- be forward make sure that you drive your heels so that you reach with your feet first and um it's the same with combat like when someone when one of our one of our fellow uh, sparring buddies suddenly you know knocks your wind out mm. but the match doesn't stop the match is still going are you awake enough to still be able to cut those 45s mm. to be able to to duck and weave and work with a plan you know i think that's why i like that's why i like martial arts so much it's a sport with a big psychological aspect to it. There 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 is a very yeah. big uh, uh psychological aspect. Mm. Uh do you want to also introduce yourself and talk about your yes. martial arts journey? Yes. Yeah. Right. So, name is Fushia. I um I teach my main style that I focus on is Tang Soo Do, Korean martial arts. Um uh that's where I started from a very young age. Um ah and you know as time goes by you start. Mm. Um experimenting uh, getting involved with other martial arts and I've always tried to keep it to the same Korean heritage because there is some um, the way they teach is similar so it was mm. easier for me so I now at this stage um I teach kundo uh, sword martial art and then I teach the kickboxing um for you guys mm. um, um it just started with a bunch of friends who were like hey can you teach us mm. like, yeah I, sure you can you guys pay you guys pay me something I'm like yeah sure and um I realized like okay this could be a thing and I immediately started getting myself registered as an instructor in Tang Soo Do and with the guidance of my instructor back then and so on, I started teaching people in my flat the flat the size mm. and I would move all the furniture away and there would be two three people and we would train for two hours usually six in the morning and then just in time for them to go to uni and um just started building a business and now I'm at a stage where I'm teaching every single day which is fantastic multiple times a day multiple yeah. times a day um great student base and it is it is it's amazing how these things work out oh, I wanted to ask a question as well you've mm-hmm. done martial arts for I want to say close to 20 years of your life I think so yeah, yeah close to 20 years of your life and you you've done these different forms you obviously you said uh, Tang Soo Do was your base yes. and then you went on dead other stuff Krav Maga Kung Fu Yeah. Uh, and you've recently just picked up Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I wanted to ask yeah. you now with all this experience you've had and you've been uh, a a a master for however many years. 
Not a master. Not a master. I'm not a master. No, 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 no. no it's it, the, so that <laughs> master level is is the next level that I could achieve. Now, oh, okay. Within my association. So what what would you call yourself at this point? I, I'm a I'm a I'm a third dan. A third dan. A third okay. dan practitioner. Yes, I, I tested for the third dan test a while ago and I passed. And mm. the probation period is over. I'm now recognised as a third dan. A third dan. So the next one would be master. So in our so it depends which association you're in, but in our association you can go for fourth dan or you can go for fourth dan masters. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, for the, the, the gradings are different, the yes, recommendations uh, yeah. are different. My goal is to reach a master's belt, mm. um, uh, but that's always been kind of like, we also encourage people when they join Tang Sudo to really start thinking about becoming a master, living like a master now. Mm. So I'm not a master yet. You're not uh, a master I, yet, I, okay. I have so much, I mean, yeah. Was yeah. I going to get you in trouble? By <laughs> 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 yes. And now you've just picked up Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu about yes. half a year ago, maybe less. I think, yeah. About how, how does it feel at your age and with all the experience you have to now pick up this different martial art form that's so, yeah, so mm -hmm. far removed from what you, your base was? Yeah, it, 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 a fantastic experience. I think it's very important, especially when you start teaching a martial art, mm to dive in as a white belt into another martial art. And Jiu-Jitsu was perfect because I have no clue. But we don't have a curriculum for rolling on the floor. We have concepts that might help. But mm. as soon as I rolled with an actual experienced practitioner, I mean, it was a, a ragdoll session from beginning to end. Mm. And I mean, every class has been rough until very recently I suddenly felt like, okay, I'm, I'm starting to understand how not to get tapped out every 12 seconds. You know, so yeah, yeah. it's, but it, it, it is fun. It is so good for me mentally to, you know, I teach all these kids and here I'm wearing my uniform with my black belt and, mm. blah, 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 blah. and then I'm done there. Okay, everybody's by, we, 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 we do the bow out and then I take my uniform off and I put on a white belt. And that is so important to keep me um, level. It, it's, a, it's, it's a very... Um, humbling. It's, it's humbling, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely humbling. And it's important to have that because you never know everything. Mm. You never know. It's, I always enjoy when people walk into my dojo with a different um, martial art background. We've had a bunch yes, of karate practitioners show up. We had kung fu practitioners show up, and just watching them spar without saying anything, without getting involved, just watching them spar. It's mm. it's it's like we all are speaking the same language, but they have an accent, and now he has an accent. You know, and, yes. and you can tell by the accent where he's from, like. Um, when um, when Don came in for his class with us, yes, you were able to tell very quickly. Uh, like he told me, Shotokan Karate, mm. and then as we were, um, as he was sparring, one of my black belts came up to and just leaned in and said, Shotokan Karate, and like absolutely, <laughs> you can tell, you can tell, it's it's very clear and it's 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 um, it's a lot of fun. Did you say you also got in trouble with uh, one of your instructors? They said you kicked. To Korean or something like that. Ah, <laughs> it was tough. Yeah, it's it's uh, martial arts. Martial art instructors they get funny quickly. Um, yeah. Very territorial, um, and it's it's phasing out. I think what's happening with MMA is is fascinating. Where all these mm. styles kind of have to admit to themselves. Okay, this section, this thing, this is not as practical as we thought in this specific scenario. But I mean, when I did um, kung fu here in South Africa, the, it was a great school, don't get me wrong, like fantastic school, I learned a lot. But um, the few times we did spar, I would just fall back onto what I know, which is the Tang Sudo. Mm. And I will say kudos to the instructor for recognizing a Korean style of kick, but they didn't like it. They made it very clear that no, when you're going to do Kung Fu, you can do Kung Fu. And fair enough, I mean, it's his school, it's his style. I, I mm. guess there is an argument to, to that. Um, Understand. But but uh, people are too territorial. Yeah, I think the the right approach is to try and stay open minded about this because the consequences of not being open minded in martial arts can be very severe, especially if you put yourself out there um, okay. as a as a student but also as an instructor. And the best way to put yourself out there is to compete. Sign up for the black belt division. Sign up for your age group. You know, if it's other third dance, fourth dance, they must probably instructors themselves. And then you spar them, you know, within that competition's rules, but you sign up for a couple of competitions with different rule sets. Yes, that, that, that does make sense. Yeah. To be more, yeah. And then you lose a little bit. <laughs> and then you move forward with that and you learn from that. You have to. You, mm. you can't really 
because the consequences are too severe. There's a whole, there's channels and channels out there, compilations of um, Bullshito martial arts. Bullshito. Yes, <laughs> it's, 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 it's bullshit martial arts. And, and it ranges from no touch martial arts, which I think fairly internationally Seems we can all agree. Yeah. yeah, we can all agree no touch martial arts is not a thing. You can't knock someone out without touching them. It doesn't, that's not how that works. I've never ever, I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, but from that ranging to like actual serious martial art systems um, that that um, they just spar terribly or their 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 forms look terrible their kicks are terrible and it's mm. it's well why does it look like that because they don't they're not exposed to the bigger martial art world if you're only exposed to your style and your school I mean if you're in a in a school the first step you should do is is compete with other schools in your own style mm. and especially if you reach a higher level. Um, you should start interacting with other styles. Um, right now, the most interaction I have with other styles is is um, the Taekwondo scene. Mm. Because Taekwondo, Tang Sudo, we have the same heritage. Um, styles are so the same that we compete against each other without any hiccups. So I go and compete with them. Um, and um, I've been considering competing Jiu Jitsu as a yeah, white belt. That's big. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a few events coming up. It costs a few buckaroonies, unfortunately, um, but I would love to compete. I understand. Yeah. Earlier on, you mentioned uh, modern martial arts, right? Mm. Uh, mixed martial arts, specifically, yeah, rather. And I wanted to ask you because, like, when yeah, when MMA, or rather, the UFC was started, that was back in late '90s or early, it was in the '90s. Mm. And that's when the the Gracie brothers, you you know about the yes. the Gracie family, yes. that they, they basically wanted to start this thing where all forms of martial arts can come together, just so they can prove mm. that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is the best base yeah. for for mixed martial arts. And they kind of did prove it with uh, Hoist Gracie winning. Yeah. Or he was a sm like a considerably smaller guy than everybody else who was there, and he won with that too much of a big deal was it, it yes. yeah he didn't seem to struggle through it yeah and for a while grappling res like wrestling grappling and jiu-jitsu was known mm. as the best base of mma all the champions that you would see mm. from then until more recently they were all grapplers mm. uh, but recently and i say recent years in the past five years we've seen more boxers more kickboxers mm. stand-up guys kind mm. of taking over now yeah and now people are arguing, what is the real best base for mixed martial arts? Do you think you have an opinion on that? The mix of the two. The mix of the two. Yeah, say. no, absolutely. What's happening is, it's incredible. We live in an incredible time. Mm. If I listen to the stories of my instructors and masters, they lived in a very closed bubble, segmented martial art world. Mm. Of course, of no internet. Really, really. It, 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 the internet plays a massive role in just connecting everything. And there was a lot of fly-by-night schools everywhere, 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 everywhere. I mean, literally back then, I mean, I, I guess you should have, in South Africa, registered with some sort of a board, but it, it feels like, you know, there was a time where almost anybody could teach. And you just put on a uniform that you buy somewhere and you, you mm. just start teaching. Now what's happening is, is that the whole world is suddenly having the same conversation for the first time. Everybody's having the same conversation. And the UFC is the, the lab that we see this in. And I think it's, it's just part of the cycle. People had to wake up to the effectiveness of grappling, mm. and they did. But the reality is, is that striking also has its place. Mm. So, you know, where should your base be if you do MMA? It, well, it's mixed martial arts. It should, it should be mixed martial arts. That's, yeah. that's, that's what's going to be my next point, that mm. it, when mixed martial arts started, it was like, hey, bring all these forms, put them together, let's see which one's the best one. And then it evolved so much where mixed martial arts itself became its own form. Yes. Whereas, like you're saying, like the yeah. best uh, base is to do both, is to do the stand-up, is to do the grappling. Mm. That I think we don't see traditional champions anymore, like people who had one base. Like, yeah. uh, well, I mean, there are still currently champions like uh, Islam, the lightweight champion. Yeah. He did sambo and he still uses sambo mm. right now in uh, the UFC. Mm. Uh, Alex Pereira, two-division champion. He's just purely a kickboxer. He can't mm -hmm. grapple to save his life. Mm -hmm. And we, we see people like this popping up, but like the current world weight champion, Leon Edwards, he wrestles with wrestlers and he stands up with uh, kickboxers. Yeah. He can do both. Uh, yeah. and we're starting to see more champions like him show up. Yeah. And they can 
wherever you take the fight, they'll be better than you there to prove that they're real champions. And that, I think that's because we're also seeing, sorry if I'm rambling, but no, we're no, seeing no, no, uh, fighters like, uh, I think his name is Raul Rosa. Raul Rosas Jr. Yeah. And he's like 18, 17. And he, he, he started training in mixed martial arts. He didn't do boxing. He didn't do anything. He started training he start, in yeah. mixed martial arts. And we're seeing more younger guys getting into the UFC. They started chain, training mm. in mixed martial arts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, that's, that's part of human nature to MMA to become a style. Because right mm. now... MMA isn't, I've done all these different traditional styles and now I just mix it all together. Yeah. MMA is a style it's unto a style itself. Style. Oh. And um, I mean, often you can just look at it from the other way. What is the rule set of the competition you're going to do? Mm. Okay, so MMA's rule set is actually very broad. If, if you compare you're... it to like a Taekwondo competition, mm. Taekwondo, you can only do a handful of things to score. It makes you very proficient, makes you a surgeon at kicking and striking, mm. but you know, he's, he's not allowed to grab you and throw you to the floor. Now in the MMA scene, all of those things, so now you train for that. And it's part of human nature to codify a thing into a style. I think one of the best examples is Jeet Kwon Do. Mm. Jeet Kwon Do is the style, no. Jeet Kwon Do is the philosophy of Bruce Lee around his martial arts. And Jeet Kwon Do these days is a style. You, you show up at the Jeet Kune Do school, you sign up to the Jeet Kune Do Association or maybe their federation, I'm not sure. Mm. And they have certain patterns and things that you need to learn. I still think it's a good style. I will be honest, I've never actually, um, I think I've met one person who did Jeet Kune Do mm. before and I never sparred with them or anything, so I don't know. But, but you know, when, when you go back and you look at what Bruce Lee's whole philosophy was, is to have no codified style. He says you get stuck in dogma and mm. so on. So, you know, I think that is part of human nature, and it's 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 impossible to to avoid it. Yeah, it's just how it's going to work. It's okay. just how it's going to work. I think we should wrap it up here, then. Yeah. Uh, he has been Fushia, the martial arts instructor. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been Omo, the martial arts student. This has been Martial Africa, the podcast. Good stuff, guys. Thanks. <laughs>